The Evangelion franchise is one of those that, because of its emphasis on symbolism, makes its fanbase to develop strange and wild theories. In this case, are even wilder as the Evangelion story is actually a pretty short one. There is no theory out there regarding Evangelion that has been more developed than the loop theory, as it could explain many of the plot holes and contradictions left by all of its different storylines. I myself have been a proponent of the idea of all of those stories being linked together at some point, and although I am a real skeptic on the loop theory, it might be one of the ways that the stories connect with each other. However, not an ideal one, but more on that in a minute. I have been reluctant to make this video for two reasons. Reason number one, probably is one of the most exhausted concepts used by content creators, especially regarding Reveal of Evangelion. As you can find, several videos already on the site about it. Although it is true that everyone has a different take on it, thus it's always interesting to hear everyone's opinions. The second reason I will be saving it for the end of the video, after I go over all of the relevant information regarding this theory. As is now a custom on my theory videos, I have to let you know that all of this information are only theories, and not canon. So don't take any of it as such, at least not at time of posting, as it has not been confirmed by any official source to date. Also bear in mind that there are countless variations to the theory, which means that there is not a single unified theory that the fandom has agreed on. Thus, you might find or see information anywhere else that differs from the ones that I will provide you with on this video. With that being said, let's begin. All of the versions of the loop theory start with the same statement, and that is that the Evangelion story is a loop story as the name of the theory says. A loop story is a story that repeats itself and usually has at least one character that is aware of the repetition. That person can also be the audience, but let's try to keep it simple and say that is one of the characters that we know from the story. The story repeats itself with some differences. If one of the characters is influenced to make a different decision on one of the loops, which means that even if the development of the story will change, the outcome will be a reset to the beginning of the story. If you're a little bit confused, then think on Bill Murray's 1993 Groundhog Day. In that movie, a man named Phil found himself to be trapped on an endless loop, repeating the same day over and over again. He is aware that as soon as he wakes up the next morning, it will be the same day that the morning before, and all of the events will repeat again and again and again. Because he knows what will happen, then he starts to make different decisions throughout the day, from robbing a bank to commit suicide. He always wakes up as if nothing has happened, until he makes some decisions that ultimately breaks the loop and he gets to the next day. Evangelion's loop theory is based on the same principle. The reason why there is some different developments throughout the story is because that a character on the story has made a different decision or did something different than in the previous story. However, the outcome is the same. The story will restart unless that character does something that will disrupt the loop. In the Evangelion franchise there is four major storylines, but for the sake of the arguments I will be leaving the anima storyline out. Not going to spoil them for you, but those who have read Yamashita's light novels know why. Which leave us with three major storylines. Two of them are already completed, and one about to end. The main storyline which is Neon Genesis Evangelion TV story that ends with the end of Evangelion Salamoto's manga, and Reveal of Evangelion, also known as the New Theatrical Edition. Under the arguments from most of the proponents of the loop theory, these different storylines are actually just one, that starts with the TV show. They name the impacts differently. For example, the TV story First Impact is also known as the First First Impact, and there is a second First Impact, and then a third First Impact, and so forth. This theory gained serious momentum in the early 2010s, when the manga released its final two chapters. 
I don't want to spoil that on this video, so let's say that those two chapters presents a different outcome after the events of the end of Evangelion. But, overall, the manga story is pretty much the same as the TV story, with some twists and new minor arguments that were used to close plot holes that the original story left behind. Also bear in mind that those two final chapters of the manga were released after the first two Reveal of Evangelion movies, which may be important in the future. As can be art that Saramoto already knew by the time he published those chapters where Reveal's storyline were heading towards to. We know that on the official tiers of canonicity, the TV first 24 episodes plus the end of Evangelion is the main story. The manga is considered canon and part of the main continuity. Nevertheless, on those events that differ from each other, the TV story prevails over the manga. Reveal, however, is not part of the main continuity, at least not yet. It has its own continuity. I do not want to make this video too long, so starting now I will be focusing mostly on the TV story and on reveals. Also, I do not want to spoil the manga as this is not the purpose of this video. We know that the events of the movies differ from the TV show, which means that there is a point on the movies that one of the characters made a decision that made the storyline diverge from its original. It long been argued that the international titles of the movie may provide us with some clues, so let's try to develop on that. The first three movies have a title with a NOT in parentheses, which may indicate an option that a character may choose that will open to an alternative storyline. So let's go over the events of the movies and try to find where those decisions are made. The title You Are Not Alone means that there is a point in the movie in which one of the characters made a choice to either leave another one alone or not. The main relationship developed in this first movie is Misato and Shinji's, which means that one of these characters made a decision that prevented the other one to be alone. This might be Misato taking Shinji down to the dogma to see Lilith, as there is a very particular take on how they are holding hands even tighter than before which may indicate a development on their relationship. Misato is telling Shinji he is not alone. That is a decision that may allow the events of the second movie on the loop. The title You Cannot Advance may indicate that one of the characters made a decision that allowed them to whether advance or not. Advance where? Well, maybe to another day as it was not the end of the world. We know that the near-third impact happened in the movie and the reason why it happened was because of Shinji saving Rei. This was obviously a decision. If Shinji would have not saved Rei and Nerf, probably the angel would have reached Lilith causing the end of the world, regardless of Kaoru's intervention. Therefore, Shinji made a decision that allowed the events of the third movie. The title You Cannot Redo may indicate that one of the characters was allowed to redo something or not. But what? Well, the world. In this movie, Kaoru tells Shinji that he can turn everything back the way it was by extracting the spears. Although Kaoru then realized that the spears that they needed to do so weren't there. Nevertheless, Shinji made a decision, removing the spears. Which means that he was not able to redo. The final movie is known as Thrice Upon a Time which could mean that there is not going to be an option. All those that could be made were already made. And this is the outcome of them, the final part of the loop. The meaning of the final movie title can be interpreted in many ways. It may indicate the outcome of the three decisions that change the continuity, or may indicate that something will happen that will result in the three main storylines merge. We do not know yet. Nevertheless, the sign, which in music is the repeat sign, it may be the strongest proof that the loop theorist advocates had and have to suggest that the story is in fact a loop. As you may know by now that all of the movies follow the three musical acts commonly used in Japanese musical drama, those being Ho, Ha, and Q. There is not a fourth act in screenplay structure, only three. Therefore, they use the repeat sign. 
Also, the three plus one may be the fear that some Asian cultures, including the Japanese, have to number four, also known as tetraphobia. This fear comes from the fact that the pronunciation of the number is similar to devil, or death. Let's move away from the name of the titles and now let's focus on the only character in the entire story that may be aware of the loop, and that is Kaoru. Many people have argued that the Kaoru that we saw in the second movie is in fact different from the Kaoru that we saw in the third movie, which means that there are multiple Kaorus. Let's explore this more in depth. On Reveal Q musical sequence, Shinji asks Kaoru how he can improve, and Kaoru's response is that he has to practice and repeat. Repeat until it feels right. Later, when Shinji and Kaoru are watching the stars, Kaoru tells Shinji that he was really born to meet him. If you remember in episode 24, a similar scene takes place, and on that occasion, Kaoru said, perhaps I was born to meet you. All this may indicate that the Kaoru that appeared on Reveal Q have some memories of the Kaoru from the original TV story. In another sequence, when Kaoru is explaining to Shinji the purpose of instrumentality, he says that many impacts have occurred before. This may open the possibility that he has witnessed other impacts. Then he tells Shinji that he can turn everything the way it was before the third impact, but he does not develop on that, which may mean that instead of actually reversing the third impact, what he can do is turn everything into an alternative reality, even go back in time you can redo. In the climax of the film, Kaoru says that the beginning is the same as the end, and then tells Shinji, and I quote, even if souls disappear, hopes and curses will remain in this world. Intentions are assimilated by the world in the form of information and continue to change. Over time, even the essence of a person can be entirely rewritten. I am sorry, this is not the happiness you were hoping for." End quote. So let's see. Even if souls disappear may indicate that even if humanity is destroyed, there still will be remnants of it in the world. Intentions are assimilated. This is evolution. Humans evolve and adapt to their environment. Finally, the essence of a person can be entirely rewritten may indicate how someone can be replaced by a different person and still have the essence of his antecessor. Sounds familiar? Finally, Kaoru tells Shinji that fate will guide him and that they will meet again. The movie ends with Shinji and Asuka. His fate, perhaps? As we know that in the end of Evangelion, they end up alone in the shores of a destroyed world. All right. So I'm going to try to reconstruct it in a linear way and see how events on the loop may have happened between the TV series and reveals the simplest way possible. Remember, this is only a simplified version of the theory. The first Kaoru might have been the one that we saw on the TV show and was killed by Shinji in episode 24. This Kaoru was made by Seal using the original Adam Soul, something similar to what Gendo did with Rei. As Gendo, Seal made a series of Kaoru and placed them on the Takba base, the moon complex, where we can see a line of coffins. The story goes into a loop. It repeats itself many times. The Kaoru that we see in Reveal 1 awakes. He remembers Shinji. In Reveal 2 goes down to the earth, stop the near third impact, then go down to the dogma with Mark 6, removes the spear of Longinus to merge with Lilith, He's still an angel, remember? That is his purpose. Resumes third impact, the one that Shinji started, for some reason decides to stop it, beheads Lilith, that doesn't stop her, impales himself and dies stopping the impact. Kaoru from Reveal Q arises from another coffin. He remembers Shinji but has no recollection of recent events. He's told that Cautious is in the dogma and the events of the third movie happen as we saw. And that, my friends, is the loop theory in a nutshell. There are other things that I wanted to address, but I don't have a feasible explanation for. 
therefore I will be leaving it for another video. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I had to reason on why I was resisting on making this video, and told you about the first one. The second one is that I do not like the loop theory, or any of its variations. It seems too simple to me. Furthermore, in case that the loop theory is proven to be true, means that the story cannot have a different resolution, like on Anima. It will be in fact the end of the main continuity. So perhaps it's just nostalgia for the end of a 25 years old journey. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. I am currently developing a set of videos regarding Reveal of Evangelion. I publish Evangelion and other anime content on my channel each week. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you did. And of course, as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.